dan, 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 dan. <laughs> oh. All right. So that just happened. Yeah. Right. <laughs> That's okay because I think it's... I forwarded everybody the uh, appropriate uh, information regarding legality issues in podcasting. Right. And everybody got a chance to look at that. So Ice-T could sue us if you so wanted to. So we should play. F- Let's talk about that clip for a minute. Okay. Could you play that clip? Because we're going to talk about it. Uh, which which one? The one oh. that you just played. Oh, okay. Oh. If you got to start from the beginning. Yeah, yeah. The, the beginning of the beginning. So this is like usually what our theme is. And... Uh, <laughs> turn it down yeah and apparently if you don't talk about it <laughs> it's copyright infringement it's copyright infringement <clears throat> but so, you can you can play a music clip of a certain duration if you are using it for discussion purposes so this is the part of the show where we're going to talk about ice T's song being awesome no we're talking also about uh, uh this is going to be an ongoing discussion i think <laughs> <laughs> just so everybody's aware about the legality of podcasting and yeah. sampling i don't know I'm, well, I'm just not so sure that I support this particular uh, idea of not being able to play just a 15 second sound bite. You know, I actually did watch um, some clips this weekend. Um, I watched um, on, on somehow, somehow, like on YouTube this weekend. I'm watching a bunch of you know old Sam Kinison stuff, and they they had a joke where he was talk you know he was talking talking crap about rap, but Ice T was in the audience. Talk crap about rap. Yeah, but I, I the nice try tea. not to curse. Yeah. Why do you have such a hard time cursing? You mean not cursing? Yeah. I mean, look, look at, look at, look at the world we live in. Well, I'm I just, mean, I'm just so curious here. It flavors his language. <laughs> Excuse me. It is the way. I, I feel more creative when I'm allowed we to a curse. Phone call? Is that a phone call? No, nah, I don't think it was. No, it's a dropped call now. I, I have had I have had my curses go viral on Facebook. Okay, that that's how much that's how that's how good I am at cursing. All right. And you know why wouldn't you want to do something you're good at? Well, I, I will say this much. Uh, going back to the discussion that we were just having, because we mm. want to talk about this for a little bit right. every week. Yeah, the, uh, <laughs> the phone's ringing again. Yeah, that's probably a prank call. So I'm just gonna do that. Oh, uh, <laughs> so I'm smart. Did you have someone that you was gonna call in, by the yeah. way? No, I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm not doing that hot mess right now. Just that mafia guy owe money to. Yeah. I'm gonna eat yogurt on camera. Right. But uh, oh, yeah, we got. So we, should we do our disclaimer the first? Tea, the iced tea thing. Yeah. Blah blah blah. And now Keith will read the disclaimer. By the way, my, this is Mario's voice. Um, for all those interested. Okay, and uh, and this, this is Nick Waldron, aka Nick Fury. Yes, and uh, this is Keith Gostad. So, welcome to There Goes the Neighborhood. I'm the producer of this show. The he got so here. NPR. I'm thing- sorry. sorry. Let me finish. I'm, I'm sorry, sorry. I'm trying to do this, please. <laughs> the things you will hear over the next 90 minutes represent the views of There Goes the Neighborhood and the people making them. All opinions, quotations, in no way represent River West Radio and are the sole responsibility of the producer, guests, and callers. Well, we're not taking any calls. River West Radio is not liable for any legal issues arising from the content of this program. And um, that includes <laughs> us discussing Ice T's song body count, <laughs> by Body Count. Uh, body Count. There yes. goes the neighborhood. Wow. But. So I don't think I'm not so much afraid of Ice T suing us as I am everyone else in the band because I don't know what they're doing. Because <laughs> I'm like Ice T's probably got all that Law and Order money. Yeah, yeah. I guess there there's like 26 listeners, um, and in like the south uh, east corner of Wisconsin <laughs> and a few in the Green Bay area. And uh, if we if we come across their radar, then, you know what I'm saying? Like some, that's, yeah. some that's amazing. I would give him the money. I would give them the money just because. Wow, really? <laughs> just because I happen to have thousands of dollars. <laughs> I could get thousands of dollars. Yeah, I could. Look, yeah, Mario. Every time I could right. get thousands of dollars. <laughs> give me thousands of dollars right now. I'm not going to. <laughs> then I don't believe you. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> uh, well, since, since we mentioned Green Bay, let me give a quick shout out to Amber Lancel, one of our listeners in Green Bay, who has been dealing with a lot of technical difficulties and has been harassing me every week. As we know, when, when did you say Ted Nichols? Technical. Oh. oh. 
How did you take 10 nickels out I of that? I bet you said 10 nickels, personally. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of Ted Nichols difficulties. Ted Nichols. Is that the yeah. name of her stalker? Ted. <laughs> He's just like be, outside her like house That would be a good alias. Ted Nichols, stop bothering Amber. Ted Nichols. There, yeah. <laughs> I ever become a wrestler and go call myself Ted Nichols. I'm, my name is Ted Nichols, I'm not... and I'm the Ted Nicholas wrestler ever. <laughs> sound like testicle tickles. That's what it sounds like. Do you know Ted Nichols rhymes speaking with of testicle Elmo. tickles? <laughs> oh yes, and speaking of Elmo. <laughs> no, no, oh, yes, no, yes, 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 yes. No, oh, uh, no. So, so we have accuser number four. Mr. Class has four guys. What? Yeah, there's another guy that came out and said he was... for Pete's sake. Another 16-year-old young boy that Elmo was fiddling with. He's 16 know? now or he was 16? He was 16. He's, How old is he now? I don't know. 30. Was he going through a phase like, <laughs> like 15 years ago? He just happened to be in a 15-year-old boy. <laughs> I don't know. Or is he still the Elmo, doing it? I, the, uh, no, this was, this was a while ago. This was like 94 that the guy said that he did it. Again, this is when he first started being Elmo. I don't know if he was, you know. What was the hit song in 94? I don't even remember. It had to be um, Hootie. Uh, what was... Um, like Hootie era? C- candle no. Bo- um No, not Candlebox. Could have been Candlebox. Yeah, I think Maybe. so. 94 is the year I'm supposed to graduate. For right? you. Um, what was, uh, what was that one by um, Stone Temple Pilots? Um, um, Leaving on, on a southern train, train only yesterday. It got Mario, really Mario white. Nah. Yeah, right I love Stone Temple Pilots. I, I feel like I'm at a Klan rally. This is ridiculous. Um, <laughs> We're at a Klan rally. We're Stone Temple Pilots. Right. They just hang around and we... listen to the Purple album. <laughs> this got really white in here. I wasn't. <laughs> they, they, they listen to Leonard Skinner, like the, the recent albums they put out. Oh, okay. I guess. So anyway. I'm going to have to get you some Stone Temple Pilots. I, I've heard of Stone Temple and Pilots. Then, I'm just not a big fan. We're just going to play that next to... Oh dear! This is not gonna like stop happening. Yes, it's it? gonna just be a thing. Somebody's right. calling and hanging up. Yeah. Oh, it's a guy stalking us. He's Ted Nichols. It's Ted Nichols. <laughs> Ted Nichols. That's that'll be every time the phone rings. Well, I'll say Ted. Nichols. Ted Nichols. Ted Nichols. <laughs> Must be Ted Nichols. <laughs> so if you're watching this on uh, on the YouTube, it's either that or fat white I'm crackhead eating, named Danny. You'll notice that I'm eating breakfast. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. It's one of the two. It's either Ted Nichols or a fat white crackhead named Danny. <sighs> oh, we have so many running gags for only having this. I think it's our 10th podcast. Yeah, I think it is. This, this is the point podcast. where it's supposed to get good. So step it up, guys. 10th podcast. Um, our tenth happy podcast. man anniversary. Number rule about podcasts. Yeah, thank you. So you know, this, this would be awesome <laughs> if not for the fact that this is the day that you want to be the 12th of something. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, 12, 12, 12. Yeah, plug away. Plug away. We forgot about the plug stuff. Tonight. Tonight. At Burdock number 12. 12 at People's 12. Books. Just like, you know, two buildings down from where we're at right steps now. Steps away. A couple steps away on Center Street here. Uh, Burdock 12, the magazine, is coming out with its 12th issue. I was busy printing and stapling and folding all the last couple of days. And <laughs> I finally was able to leave my house just in time for this particular show. So... If you're not doing anything, come by. There's going to probably be upwards of, I'm going to guess, 15 readers at least. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, so wait, wait. People's, book, People's Books is on center now? Yeah, it's right over there. Oh. There's another one. See, I, I know. There's oh, another People's oh, Books. Oh, there's two. No, no. The, the, one, the one on Locust closed, and they moved that one over here. Okay, oh, okay. okay. The rent was too high at that place. And I thought they was the other one was still open. That was my understanding, but you, okay. Okay. If it's open, it's just to get, like, stuff out of there, you know? Well, it's, it's, it's a great bookstore, so I, I didn't mm-hmm. know that, so I wanted to, you know. So put it and out there. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're on Center Street now, apparently. Center and uh, People's Books is awesome. Yeah, Center and uh, what is that? Fretney? Fretney. Yeah. I frequent their used bookshelf um, and their clearance bookshelf quite often. They have some really cool books for like 75 cent, 25 cent, 50 mm-hmm. cent, stuff like that. But yeah, so then this Friday will be Friday. the one year anniversary of the New World Document Poetry Show. It may also be my last. Appearance as the host of New Word Document. Um, really? Yeah. So it's probably probably will be my last time Why hosting the show. Just moving on. Um, Cause you don't pay him enough. <laughs> <laughs> I get barely get paid at all. Um, <laughs> he wants thousands of dollars. <laughs> that was where that was going to come from. Uh, indeed. But no. But uh, just uh, you know, just moving on. But uh, so Friday will be the big show. Darla Nikki Jansen, Dia, Blazing Green, um, I don't know, 
something, something, and somebody else. It's gonna be like, what you say? It's gonna be like twelve or thirteen poets <laughs> like appearing all in one night. Cynthia Spencer. You got some music going on. Lynn, there, right? Lynn, Lynetta Davis. Yeah, I forget um, everything that's going on. It's gonna be a lot of stuff. It's it's a year long um, retrospective of everything we've done for the last year. Um, plus, we're gonna have a DJ. It's gonna be a Friday night party and mix in some poetry and whatnot. And um, it'll probably be my swan song as the host of New Word Document. Oh, dang. Yeah, but dang, we're gonna have man. a whole. But it's gonna be a whole bunch of fun. So, I hope everybody comes out and checks it out. That should be what it do. Okay, what it do? What it do, baby? Yeah. All right. Nick? I just got real blessed yes. for no reason. I don't even. Not this week. I got I got finals this week. No. All right. Yeah. See, we always do this to Nick, and he's in school right now. So it's just basically, <laughs> where are you at in school, son? Right. That's like every time we go flip over to him, it's like, how's, oh, but the, how's I wasn't, the school? I wasn't done. So this. Oh, I'm sorry. Man. Um, this Saturday I will be at Circle A. Circle A. Um, which is at 925 East Chambers. Mm -hmm. No. I got it wrong. 93, 932 East Chambers. Chambers. Um, with Jenny Rosewalt. Um, used to be Jennifer Kraft um, doing some poetry. I guess uh, Sam, her husband, and his band is going to be playing, and then we're going to read some poetry during the intermissions. Sam Rodewald, right? Rodewald. Yeah. I don't. What did I? What did I say? You said Rosewald. I don't know. <laughs> it's white people names. I don't. Ted know. Nichols. Ted Nichols. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so I'm going to be doing some poetry then too. All for Pete's sake. Speak of the devil, Ted's calling the back. But uh, anyways. It's, it's like watching PBS when they're doing a pledge drive. <laughs> All those damn phones in the background. Yeah, but nobody answers this one. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Somebody actually want to give us money? I mean, that would be pretty awesome. Don't be desperate, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'll just putting it out of, there. I'll, I'll take a, a pack of cigarettes and a beer. Uh, <laughs> sometimes you just got to put it in the universe. Yeah. I'm not as cynical as people think I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I would if uh, if anyone wants to give us money, I would like some more coffee, another yogurt, and another banana, please. Right, we're not we're not expecting to like get paid like this is a real job or something, but you know. I don't know. To... I don't know. I think if we get enough real together, well, we could uh, we could take over uh, what's his name spot. Uh, yeah. Who? Miscellaneous conservative local <laughs> radio host. <laughs> Insert um, radio insert, yeah. insert conservative radio host name here. Yeah. Uh, a guy who deserves to be fornicated in the ass by a cactus. You can't say ass what? unless you're talking about a donkey. He was talking about his donkey. In, in his donkey. In his donkey hole. In his donkey. <laughs> Amazing. But yeah, man. So that's what's going on. Circle A Saturday. <laughs> newer document eight twenty nine twenty five East Locust. Okay. I was just giggling at the right. guy with the drug rug riding past on the bike. Yeah. yeah. That's always good. They're random dudes always on bikes in River West. Wearing drug rugs. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah, like that. Drug rugs, that, that's what they call them now. That's what I call them. Yeah, mm. yeah some uh, some kid that I threw out of the Miramar like f at least a, at least five times tried to sell me some uh, some powder right off the brick, right outside of <laughs> right right off the last brick. week. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> what else? What can I say? Oh, last night was the uh, ninth anniversary of the tuesday night open mic at the mirror Woo! that was pretty fun man uh we had an impromptu not too not terribly impromptu but we had the november criminals all in the house last night and uh there's like at least 26 people had played so it went until like one in the morning wow yeah it was really great you look like you were there you're so tired no nah, man i got an upper respiratory infection Sorry oh my oh. bad <clears throat> yeah 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 that's what I, that's why I missed Monday night when Hope Floats did her oh. feature at the Monday thing. I was laid in the bed because um, my nasal passages was all swollen up, so it's hard to breathe sometimes. Oh, yeah. that's a bummer, man. Mm -hmm. It's that time of year, though. Yeah, especially when you smoke cigarettes as much as I do, it doesn't help. Do we have any generic Christmas music since it's that time of the year? I hate Christmas music. <laughs> oh, what? Yes. Oh, man. He's, I'm gonna he's have to a take... Grinch. You know, he's nothing, wearing green there's, today. Right. There's nothing that he does like. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't like even that. I don't even have anything against the holiday season necessarily. You clearly just said you hate but Christmas music. But I hate music. Christmas music. <laughs> yeah, you did. I, I don't have anything against the holiday why, why, except why? his damn music. <laughs> <laughs> why? Those damn songs and all that well, cheer yeah. and, and little kids. And those who's down in Whoville. <laughs> <laughs> crumple, crumple. Oh, man. Mm-mm-mm. It -mm -mm. made yeah. no damn sense. You don't like what, Christmas. Don't you, how don't you like Christmas? Like, what, what did Christmas do to you? When Tell this story. Here, here we go. 
Why don't you know, you like there, there, there really is no story behind it. I just hate Christmas music. Oh, he just hates the music. Season. Yes. Not the season necessarily, the music. <laughs> the okay. music. Now, I'd have a reason if I, if, if, you know, and I don't hate Christmas music. I find certain songs annoying. Uh, but I worked at Goodwill during a Christmas season, and they had the piped in music going the whole time. And there were no commercial breaks because it was like whatever satellite radio or I don't know how it works, but they just wouldn't stop. And almost once on an, on the hour, you had that. <laughs> you know that song is like simply having a wonderful Christmas time. It's all synthy. It's like. Yeah. Right. And it was so annoying, <laughs> but it's never left me. I guess. I don't know. It's don't aged mind. me, man. That aged mind. me ten I've, years. I've been now. caroling. I mean, on when, when who's ever heard of well, like, what what Christmas songs are really good on their own? Like like take away strip away all the sentimental feelings and Silent all Night Man is good. If you if you strip away the sentimental feelings from any song, it sucks. Like you can't you can't say. I'm not, I'm not talking, about, I'm not talking right. about sentimental feelings of the song, but just you know what surrounds them in in the time that they are played. I don't That's know. What makes songs listen listen, good, listen to these songs. That Christmas for you. That uh that Mariah Carey got that one song she sings on Christmas. Nat King Cole's all most of his carols are nice. Sandy well, did sound, Sandy did a song, song last night called First Christmas Away from Home, and it was mm. really beautiful song well i'm saying listen yeah. listen to these songs in 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 june and see if they and see they, they still bring me christmas joy man like, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know what you're talking uh, about like, I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about so yeah uh, here we are i'm talking about your cynical behind i don't know what what, i don't about. know what you all are talking, talking about, about like the the i'm talking about the uh Mm. I'm talking about the the cold heart, the little the little Grinch heart the that you have Grinch in your chest that's getting smaller and smaller. That's what I'm talking about. And you got on green today, so it makes so the Grinch <laughs> metaphor is even better. It's the visual. Wait, the de- I'm, 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 wear, I'm wearing a retro '70s <laughs> Bucks shirt with, with a deer on it, like and it's green. Dog. It looks just like the little dog that that the Grinch stapled the, the deer. Oh on. yeah. <laughs> Hey, can we get the camera on my shirt? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Let, let people camera see operator. This. I really do like this shirt. Cambot. Yes. Yeah. This is excellent. See, it is a green, yes. green Bucks shirt. Mm. There you go. With a deer on it. Indeed. So Grinch, what else do you hate? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, 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 I hate little kids. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, now that you mention it. <laughs> Say what all, say, <laughs> say all you want, but I know that deep down this guy's gonna be carving the roast beast. <laughs> Indeed, yeah, yeah. Yeah. roast mm-hmm. beast. Roast it's beast. from the gri- like like a like a. Oh like man, a fry. you don't even know. You don't even know. You don't even watch any Christmas related <laughs> stuff, do you? No. Not in many years, no. Oh, man. You know, it, it, it's, I think it's a I'm Grinch just... reference. It's a Grinch reference to the Grinch yeah. tale. The Hoover. I mean, I, I got to be honest, and I, I don't mean to be, you know, sanctimonious about it or anything, but I really have gotten burnt out by all the the holiday hype, all the commercialization, all the all the war on Christmas talk, all the, you know, it's just, uh, it it's it's not even an enjoyable time of year for me. So you basically, uh, you. It's the one time of year I tried to hold back some of the disdain and, and animosity I had for my family members long enough to wish them a happy holidays. And both of my sons is born in and around Christmas. Um, my youngest boy is on 14th, and my oldest boy is on the 26th. So. I like Christmas. I've always liked Christmas secretly. I used to not like my family, so it made Christmas harder for me, but I don't care what other people see Christmas as. And I know Jesus wasn't born on the 25th of December either. Um, I just, it's a nice time of year where people are just a little bit nicer if just for a day. If just for one day, people seem to act, try to be on their best behavior. Both of your sons were born around Christmas. Yep, I was growing the same time of year every time. Well, I was gonna say, <laughs> sounds like it's you a like season for the kids. Sounds like you like. <laughs> it sounds like you like tax season a lot more. Right. Actually, <laughs> March Madness is where you go. Right. Uh, right. Oh, start, I just watched four basketball games. <laughs> yeah. That's right around the start of baseball season too. Like my birthday. My birthday is actually in the first part of April. So. <laughs> ah, there you go. Just birthday sex. Children, bro, birthday sex. <laughs> little boys, little boys. You're both birthday sex. <laughs> That's all That's right. A... I kind of did the math once. I think I might be birthday sex too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, summer uh, baby. Summer baby. I'm a I'm a February, and I'm going back, and I'm like, I think that's. Nine months is about where my mom's birthday sits. Mm-hmm. Yeah. September, I, August, um, August, September. I, I actually pinned down my, my conception point to Benton Harbor, Michigan. 
my my I guess okay, that so, was, that so was now it. you got yeah, so that now you it. have to tell that story yeah because <laughs> I'm I'm curious how, um, how did you ascertain wait wait okay oh, what kind of car was it <laughs> <laughs> actually my dad's a race car driver and apparently that's where they were the you know uh-huh. that weekend and uh-huh. yeah he won a race that weekend yeah and, yeah and um, so you're a victory lap <laughs> I guess I am. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm going to change your nickname to the checkered victory flag. <laughs> I like Victory Lab better. Actually. Victory, victory Lab? Victory Lab. Yeah. Oh, man. Because wow. my, Ni- my name is Nicholas, which means victory. So Maybe it was just a young racing strike. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, didn't, I, didn't, uh, I didn't bow well with me. Oh, <laughs> man. All that celebration in the in the in your conception, and you hate Christmas. You Grinch, you you Ebenezer Scrooge. You will be visited by three ghosts come this Christmas Eve. <laughs> <laughs> the ghosts of Victory Lap past. <laughs> The ghost to turn three. <laughs> oh man, that's a Days of Thunder reference, isn't it? No, wait, t- turn four was where the guy yeah, died. died. Yeah. yeah. See, it's it's. it's <laughs> we both are like, oh yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> that sucked. Wow, that was a new low for the show. <laughs> well, see, here, here's here's the here's the thing though. Like, I'm the first person in many generations of men in my family who is not a race car driver. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. Why didn't you get into the racing thing? Uh, probably because my dad was an abusive drunk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, wow. I mean, <laughs> everybody's dad is abusive drunk. We're from Wisconsin. You, you are, you are, you are armchair psychologist. You know, you want to pin it down to that. Go ahead. Uh, hey, what up? Uh, that is no why reason. I hate not Christmas. To, you know, yeah, that's no reason. There's no reason not to race a car. Al- alcohol, <laughs> alcoholism has never stopped anybody from liking Christmas. Look, I, I never say I like getting drunk and racing in cars. Okay, I'm just saying my dad's a dick. You can't, you can't say, say dick. What? What? Unless you're saying his name was Dick. <laughs> right. Oh, your dad is a dick. Your dad's Baldwin. name was Richard. Yes. I get you. Yes. Richard Waldron. Yes. Oh, ah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Richard. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh. He was a Dick Waldron. <laughs> well, dick, he, dick, he was a Dick, dick Trickle. trickle. <laughs> He raced against Dick Trickle a number of times. I do know that. Did he listen to Dick Curlis? <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'll be a hero when I strike. <laughs> we spent so much time talking about previous shows. We can't actually do a show right. for referencing the previous show. If you watch the first no, episode, no, that is the same. No, we do the same no, no, show every week. If you listen, week. we have listeners. <laughs> We're trying to catch everybody up over time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, well, let's look. Look, here's the thing. If we were doing this once a day, yeah. or, or once, you know, every day, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, um, the same running gags would be happening. <laughs> yeah, they really would. If you listen to any of those morning guys, they do the same thing. Yeah. It's the same, same group of friends. But anyway, oh, we had so much to talk about. Who was that crazy, uh, like, sort of racist guy that you were uh, finagling with on the old FB there that posted on? I don't know who that guy was. He's just, that was just... hilarious. Well, so here's what happened, Mario. <laughs> and this is, it. you'll probably be kind of, maybe you'll find this funny. I found it. I hilarious. thought what I did was hilarious, but I always think what I do is funny. Because <laughs> I have uh, this obsessive compulsive well, disorder. See, here, it was hilarious, but it was like the Dennis Miller ratio. Like only like 1% of the people who saw it. it. And I, <laughs> but we did. I and think... I was like 33% of them. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. So this guy posts on Bob Donovan's wall, the alderman, yeah. something about, what is? What was it? He something said, about um, the lynch mob? Yeah, he said um, protesters yeah he was um he was congratulating congratulating bob donovan on on standing up to that lynch mob mm. yeah. and so nick got furious at uh, this. <laughs> dang, dang, dang. <laughs> but he was kind of, he was right i actually agreed with him but i was like i was you know but somebody else said oh you suck glenn and then that guy came back and was like well, it sounds like you suck, and basically inferring that the guy must be gay for disagreeing with him. Oh. Which is, I'm like, that's... Oh. Uh, Which is what made me want to just... So he got furious. Yeah. Oh. And then what you said you had a nice little paragraph there about basically calling him out for being a racist. Which I was surprised you didn't. You could have went off on his homophobia, too. It's like, hey, you're a homophobic and a racist. Oh, <laughs> you, <yeah>. must, <laughs> you know, you, you sort of fit into a certain demographic there, probably. <laughs> but uh, then then he... he I, I just put... You know, I tagged us. There goes the neighborhood. Because right. I thought it was like, oh, yeah. yeah. One of those moments. Then he came back and he had like another rebuttal for you. Basically proving out his logic of, yeah. yes, anytime a large group of black people get together, it is a lynch mob. Okay. That was this guy's logic. Yeah. And then I wrote, are you sure it wasn't the lynch mob? <laughs> and, I, and I put the video for freedom as an AK. Right, right. 
Did and Nick was the, Nick was the only one that got. That's a pull. Yeah, it was it was a bit of a stretch, but it is kind of. But fun. I thought it was funny. <laughs> if you're out there right now, go listen to that song. Tell me that's not a hilarious way to end an argument. Yeah. But I mean, Any, for, anything by Dun Lynch Bob Dun Lynch Bob is, uh, is a pretty hilarious way to end an argument. argument. Right. <laughs> right. Look, I mean, there really was nothing to say after that. I mean, I could have came back. To I could have just, you know, point this guy's, it. you know, BS out even more. But it's like that was such a great way to end it. All right, In such an awkward way. It's like it just kind of fit. <laughs> Nick's ability wanna... to argue with trolls, he'll go days. There are trolls on my <laughs> Facebook page, yeah. like Scott and a few other people that are just trolls waiting for me to post anything about race or gender, and they jump in like, no, blah, 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 blah. And Nick jumps right on them, like my attack dog on Facebook, right? <laughs> the troll, troll fighter. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the Hobbit. He, he's like... <laughs> and the irony, the irony of that is and because, I back off. <laughs> because I was, because I was, Apparently conceived in Michigan, that makes me a troll. <laughs> I guess. Oh, in Lower uh, Michigan. Yeah, oh, so I got it. Okay. But, uh, but <laughs> so I don't. I just don't. I quit being so amused by arguing with trolls. Like if you, you're that. I, I really want you to make your point. Like I always let Scott says what he has to say, and then I'll go. Yeah, that didn't make any sense. And then I move on. So when other people come and read it, they end up arguing with him, and I don't have to argue with him anymore. But I've spent whole afternoons going back and forth. Every once in a while, I catch a good troll and wanna want to eviscerate somebody real quick so i give them the business but i usually try to this can't my... this can't be a real name but some, the, somebody was on nick kovacs uh, mm -hmm. uh thing posting and he was using the name uh mike grim oh. and i thought it was mke grim mm. somebody posted don't you know because i started teasing him back yeah mm. like sometimes i get amused by that <laughs> too i mean i'm just as guilty of like troll fighting is kind of fun it is it kind is. of fun if you're if you're not doing anything and you're bored <laughs> and it's just like man i really want to exercise some of my opinions on somebody <laughs> hey look a troll <laughs> it's like that on the internet yeah. and, but you, can't, you just described the internet that yeah was, that's pretty that much the internet <laughs> and do, 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 do. yeah hey, i want to fight a troll yep, that's right. i don't know if i've ever actually been a troll myself oh, like a Initiated. Do you oh, do? yes. So oh. I used to do it a lot more. Yeah. I used to just post like random sexist crap on my wall. Just to, like, <laughs> yeah, you women should stay in the kitchen with your big mouths and then sit back and watch my feed blow up like, <laughs> <laughs> you dumb broads. <laughs> Oh, that's evil, but it's oh. funny. Oh. Yeah, I just told a bunch of women to listen to our show this week. Uh, and you are... Yeah. yeah. Well, whatever. This is why we still have 40 likes on Facebook. No, it's your hatred of Christmas. Be quiet. Move on! I, I think no, the three of us are just... Yeah, we, all of us hate something that's going to alienate a lot of people. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's and, true. Mm -hmm. Anyhow. The moral that, majority, yeah. as a matter of fact. I um, <laughs> yeah. But no, but I don't uh, I don't uh, pay that no attention. But I used to do it a lot more. I could post all of the inspirational stats, you know, being a poet and whatnot. People have this, especially, well, I was going to complain about this today, and I, I said I wasn't. But being a black poet, let me explain something to y'all. You're expected to be <laughs> I'm sorry, I got a, a politician. <laughs> You're expected to be. Like, you can't just be a poet. Like, they want you to be a community activist, a racial unifier, a community leader. And I was like, look, man, I just like to write. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Most of the time. <laughs> right. And I'm like, uh, could you back off me a little bit? Yeah, I agree with the point, but I I don't want to come to a rally. I, you know what I mean? I, I was, I'm was i drunk. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know basically, what you expect. Basically, you're saying you want to be a rapper. <laughs> <laughs> no, he wants be ODB pretty much. <laughs> right, but with more more submerged and deep feeling. <laughs> <laughs> you wish you were submerged and deep feeling as I claim. I wish someone to would be. tell me I'm submerged and deep feeling. <laughs> I got submerged and deep feeling once too on the real. <laughs> Does she yeah. read it uh near the sets? <laughs> <laughs> yep, she did. Yes, she did. <laughs> Sophomore year in college. <laughs> um, uh, great googly whew, moogly. Great uh, googly moogly. I just want to make one one quick point. Oh, about geez. trolls though okay, um, go ahead. you know i i a lot of people ask me you know and I, I know i know dana asks me all the time you know why are you you know why are you arguing with people on, online again right. Appar apparently i have a penchant for this mm. but you know if, especially if it's a local issue because i feel like 
a lot of things are the way they are locally because a lot of people with big mouths just bark louder than everybody else. Mm-hmm. And people just hear, hear the same Rhetoric. bull repeated mm-hmm. so many times that they just take it as truth. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, I'm not trying to change the people's minds who are saying these things, but I'm trying to, you know, I'm, but I want the people who, you know, are just reading it, may not necessarily, you know, participate in the conversation, but just reading it to be able to see exactly why these people are just full of it. I and, think, I, I think you can't, I mean, maybe. I wonder how well we could illustrate any point that will make somebody change their mind. You might give somebody a script to have the argument themselves, but people think how they think. If you stupid, you just stupid. Like right. I really ain't much I could. After tw- after twelve, I have. So my question is, when can you call a kid stupid? Like at what age <laughs> is it acceptable this. to go? No, because I'm saying because at at twenty five, if you if you're talking to somebody on the internet, right. they're twenty five years old and they have formulated the opinion that, you know, being gay means you're going to hell. There is nothing I'm, I am not going to magically find the adjectives necessary right. to convince them that that's not true. So there's no reason me arguing with them. Like, yeah, okay, yeah, God hates God hates the homosexuals. I don't know what you... Thanks, thanks. 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 Guys, I said I hated fans. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, me! <laughs> me! <laughs> I told you people but that, that's just it though you're not you're not arguing to change any change those people's minds you're arguing for the sake of the people who are reading and still have a chance and and I, 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 I figured I, I, like I said my, so my question comes once you're stupid you're already on that track there's little to nothing that's going to change you from being stupid like uh if you if you can make the leap logically that the earth is not round at this point in the game. There's <laughs> nothing I can, you know what I mean? If 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 you're still a creationist at this point, I don't. There's nothing I can say to you that's gonna. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, okay, you're right. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we didn't evolve from from anything. Yeah, you're right. You're perfectly right. Yeah, we came from wolves. <laughs> <laughs> At least white people did. You know, <laughs> I don't know about y'all. I have well, here, no here, idea. Here, here's my thing with why you know creationists are so hung up on disproving evolution. Okay. You know, even if they did, you know, maybe maybe they got this, you know, this this indisputable piece of evidence that proves that evolution can't possibly be okay. So what does that really? What? How does that prove your point? If well, I can prove that the sky isn't green, does that mean that it's red? What's the guy? It was the it was the the, the, the lawyer that was arguing with um, Clarence Darrow. He's the one that that made evolution and and the Bible and linked the two like that. Because he's oh if you if you prove this right, that means you disprove Genesis, and like that for the longest time was never the case, you know, uh, theologically. Right. So that was just this one guy's argument that caught fire with evangelical uh, Christian, and they've been using it ever since. And it's the it's not theologically sound you know it just isn't but you know again we could go all i could go all day on this i could call up all i, uh, all, I, could call I up there's all no my- if you are a faith-based person if you're the kind of person who is a believer first before you come up with any scientific evidence that's how you built your 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 inside is built on i'm gonna believe before anything yeah but the doctrine just, is wrong the doctor, I, I suppose no, they're, just, they're, they're, they're misinterpreting the, ver- I, the first i agree place, i know? agree completely yeah. they're taking things that are supposed to be metaphoric and making them literal they're taking things that are supposed to represent some spiritual awakenings and they're taking them to me meant literally right. i may i may be of that opinion but i'm saying that 30 i can't convince you otherwise i'm not gonna i'm not gonna get a bright light to come on at a certain point in your life i'm saying so when is it that there's no more hope is it because i know kids that are 10 that are stupid but i'm not sure i can call them stupid yet because they're still learning they need to do i know at 30 there's no there's nothing i'm well, no, look, I'm going to say this. Like, <laughs> there have been studies and studies about like the, where these, these child psychologists, they get locked in a room with a bunch of kids, mm-hmm. and they come out picking who's going to be the next president, who's going to be the next mm-hmm. banker, who's going to be successful when they get old. Mm-hmm. And sadly enough, they figure out based on these children's personalities. I'm talking like two years old, mm-hmm. you know, three years old, four years old, whatever, you know, like really young, you know, like in a room full of kindergartners, they know who's going to be the homeless bum, mm-hmm. you know. And the thing is, is like they they say that they know they get all these identifiers, mm. but they still haven't worked out the formula for prevention. You mm. know what I mean? Stopping that from happening within a person's life. Mm. And there's plenty of things that can go on in your life that'll lead you diff- down different paths. And I don't think that's the thing. When you start predicting people, 
uh, uh, future like that, you're writing their future for them mm. by anticipating their failures as well as their successes. And that's that's why I disagree. I, and I, with agree, it, I, agree, you know? I agree that I agree that statistical data isn't the basis of human behavior. Um, isn't the sole? You know, what I mean, there's so many different yeah. um, stimulus in the in the equation that you can't use statistical data alone. But what I will say is this: um, the stupid is stupid does, <laughs> and. I know some people that it's just no point in me arguing with them. I used to. I used to be. I used to be Nick Fury all day online, man. Like <laughs> we would be side by side and yelling the crap out of each other on the same thread to the point where we they would the people would just go away. Like these guys got it down, and that's great. Um, I just stopped caring. Like I don't want to argue with you anymore. I write poems occasionally where I get furious, but it's usually at a specific person, like right. um, Herman Cain. I couldn't. I couldn't go without saying something about Herman Cain because he was just so enormously annoying right. i couldn't let it go by without saying something but usually i try to you know steer myself away from just to comment you know scott Wal doing a scott walker poem or even talking about scott walker at this point except in the confines of this program i just don't i don't care like i, I told y'all not to it became more more people decided they were gonna vote for scott walker in the re-election and they tricked me because I thought it'd become such a a hipster, you know, cool. It was cool. The cool thing is to hate Scott Walker here in Milwaukee. But I I said then they weren't campaigning enough in Economy Walk and Merrill in the places that really mattered in the long run. Yeah. Um, well, and Are campaigning properly. And frankly, it wasn't piggybacked onto a more popular election. The reason mm. that we had a lot of Democratic success when Obama ran is because Obama is incredibly popular. Right. <clears throat> you can't underestimate that guy's popularity and how that boosts the voters' turnout. Right. When we have a recall in the middle of summer, all those kids are at home. They don't come out for that stuff. Right. You know what I mean? They're, they're, they wouldn't vote otherwise. The only reason some of those kids vote is to impress each other, you know. Right, and right. I'm sorry to say that, 18-year-olds, but it's just kind of like, I know you. Right. I was you once. <laughs> <laughs> I know how y'all think. Says the scruffy old man. Yeah, I was you once, kids. I was, like <laughs> you. <laughs> I was like you once, and now look Damn. at me. I know everything about nothing. Damn right. kids in your MP3s. Yeah. <laughs> we had CDs. We didn't complain. <laughs> we had records. <laughs> I'm really old. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I remember buying that t Leaders of the New School record the day it came out, dog. I had to run and go get that. That's sad, man. Can you remember all the members? Uh, yeah, Dinko D, Charlie Brown, Buster Rhymes. That's the Leaders of the okay. New School. Charlie Brown and Buster Rhymes. I don't know any of their songs. <laughs> <laughs> Just another case of that old PTA. None. Oh, yeah. A sob story. A sob story. Oh, uh, yeah, that was yeah, a couple of songs. That. Yeah. I used to love leaders of the new school and Tribe Called Quest and Tribe, Dream Warriors. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into this. I have no idea. No. Um, yeah, I know. Oh, but yeah. I'm saying you like the Dream Warriors. Yeah, and uh, UTFO, <laughs> and I used to like a lot of stuff. I used to I like I, li I like Souls of Mischief. Yeah, they're good. They're good. Okay. Souls of Mischief was good. We should play um, some 15 second sound bites of these songs. Right. Talk about <laughs> we can get, do a hip hop. Get, 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 get a little bit of far side on there. There, there, is, there comes my mode of expertise. I am a hip hop head, and that is what I enjoy. Mm. It's the rap, the rapidity rap music, as opposed to the rap music, as opposed to you know, uh, two chains. That's not music. I heard a song. I heard a song today called "I Bust." I bust nuts in these um, female dogs. <laughs> that is the name of the Trying song. not to curse. <laughs> it is. And uh, it's on my wall. It is the most ignorantest. I've, and I've heard <laughs> I've heard Gucci Mane. And that and his name is Gucci Mane. And it is still the most he got a song called Stupid with an ice cream cone on his face. And this song eclipses the level of moronacy. And that's not even a word. <laughs> okay. Like, oh my God, this is the most ignorant crap. I, you know, the hook is I, I bust yes. in these. Yes. You know what I'm saying? That's the hook, and that's how, and he just said he repeats it over and this over. Just one again. of those guys that has like a million kids by seven different women. I have no idea. Yeah. I would assume um, he has children because he busts in these. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, You're man. damn right. Oh, oh no, Tammy. Tammy does too. <laughs> <laughs> See, we can use Tammy Baldwin because she's a politician. Oh, so I read that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I read that online. So apparently, um, a is Butch bad? No, but Butch female 
um, got arrested in Richmond, Virginia. Okay. Because um, her strap on penis, she couldn't find it. And she said her girlfriend and her they were arguing, trying to break up. And she said, oh, girl, stole it and hit her in the head with an ironing board. And she called the police on her. Wait, what? The strap on was stolen. <laughs> I thought you were going to say she hit her in the head with a strap on. No, right. no, yeah, yeah. no. She said she hit her in the head with an ironing board because she would have been a really good yeah, These are <laughs> great clue items, by the way. <laughs> in the bedroom <laughs> with a strap on. <laughs> in the bedroom. I was going to say, in the, in the billiard never, room. Right. In the billiard room we with a strap clue. on. I have never played Clue. I have never played it. We'll, we'll bring Clue next time right. and we'll set it up on these two uh, uh, tables. We'll that'll be the podcast so, next week. Yeah, that'll, we'll replace the lead, lead pipe with a mini dildo. <laughs> <laughs> mini dildo. We will replace the lead pipe with a mini dildo. That happened. That yes. just happened. Yes, yeah. it did. Those words came There's out. There's gotta be mouth. like something like that at the tool shed. Like <laughs> Oh yeah. What? Like a tiny a lead I, dildo. A tiny, tiny little, little dildo that you can just use as a I game love. piece. I bet you they've got board games there that have like dildos. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, uh, and you know I, I think Spencer Gifts used to sell like like candy dildos. Yeah. Tiny, yeah. tiny wieners. Yes. <sighs> tiny wieners. <laughs> <laughs> Key and Peele's are Key and Peele are already really, really, really funny. So they had this they these two guys standing in front of the locker, and and the one guy was saying how you know it's gonna be a party this weekend, and he was really, really uh, bummed about it because he had uh, he was biracial, but he had a white penis. White penis. And so yeah. his friend was like, was like, uh, what do you mean a white penis? Like it's white. He's like, no, nah, it's white, white. Like it's you know to say it was tiny. And so he was like, well, the gir- they went to a what looked like an all white high school. So the guy was like, well, don't worry about it. She's a white girl, so white she's not gonna care. School. So. He said, okay, man, okay. So he goes off, and then they cut back to dude coming in the from the auditorium, coming in by the lockers again. And uh, he's like, how'd it go, man? Why and he was like, I don't want to talk about it. Why he's like, why? What happened? He was like, black vagina. Black vagina, my penis. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's, that's racist. That's <laughs> helping the story. Black <laughs> vagina. Why do you keep looking at me, man? <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. <Yeah. laughs> <Sorry. laughs> uh, oh, so many things I wanted to say that I did. <laughs> that's, that's not wrong. That's not wrong at all. Uh, <laughs> I'm just saying, you kept, every time he kept singing that, after the, after that first time, he kept looking at me. <laughs> My vagina, white penis. <laughs> That's how it goes. <laughs> it's, 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 it's soul That's going to be him and Dana's wedding part. <laughs> oh, dang. <laughs> Yeah, come, come on, come okay, out, come was, out. But that was, I had like 50 of them in my head. That was the only one I used. I quit. I quit. It was, only, it was the only one that probably Come, come, come to Riverwoods <laughs> video at 5 p.m. Or you see, you'll see me kicking the crap out of Mario. Yeah. I didn't. <laughs> he will get furious. <laughs> Notice how I'm kind of oh. staying out of this one. <laughs> Like, but you can see that's what you notice Nick said he kept staring at him cause I can see the wheels turning to keep it <laughs> he was like ooh that's that's a little much put this on Keith you asshole <laughs> whoa you're talking uh, about a donkey you right? you can say asshole you can say yeah you can you yeah. Care? Yeah. yeah donkey that's hole alright <laughs> say bung hole from now on though just try to steer away from it cause I'm not certain, absolutely certain but well, <laughs> no oh. I think you can say ass though I think you can say ass nowadays yeah. on the radio but man that's hilariously funny it was there were like 50 jokes but I was the only one I used. Oh. Black vagina, white penis. How? <laughs> hey. uh. That's me dancing. Dance break. <laughs> Gonna be you know what? It, from it, the side. <laughs> from the side. Black uh. vagina, white penis. <laughs> <laughs> hitting it from the side Hitting it from the side That's 5 o'clock outside of Riverwest video 
<laughs> in front of the bike racks. Literally in front of the bike racks. <laughs> Whatever, man. <laughs> I have nothing to do with this. There's going to be some reverse. You have everything to do with this. <laughs> I did tell the story and everything. Like, it wasn't a setup for any of this. It just kind of happened that way. I just thought that was hilarious. Hilariously funny. Uh, and really racial. Okay. Really, really racial. Okay, but th think about it, Mario. That makes You know us. You know our tendencies when we get on the air. <laughs> and you really thought <laughs> that, that you I could tell that. a joke where the punchline was black vagina, white penis, and not think it would turn into this. <laughs> I did kind of. I didn't think about yeah, it. Uh -huh. I, I've been, Thank I've been, you. I've been I don't seek. Know. Five o'clock outside of Riverboys video. I've been seek. You want me to plug something? I'm plugging this. <laughs> it's the, I blame it on the, I got a chest cold. Can I, can I get a rain check? Or at least get home to get my gun. <laughs> we, we no longer want payment. We want whiskey and PCP. Oh, man. <laughs> Oh man, that's funny. So, oh, I can't stop singing that crap in my head. <laughs> stop it! Wow, <laughs> penis. Do you know this is gonna turn into a sound clip? You know, hitting it from the side, hitting it from the side, hitting it from the side. Uh, Black vagina, white penis. <laughs> <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with that. No. Yeah. <laughs> I've watched my share of videos where the white penis was quite yeah, thunderous. Yeah, yeah. So, no. Yeah. Oh, no, it's not. It's just, yeah. a, it's just a generality that, uh, what is it called? A uh, stereotype that makes it funny. <laughs> it's like, you know, the the, the Asian lady used to be on Mad TV the, uh, that with the, the broken accent. Like, it was funny, and I knew it was kind of racial, too, but it was funny just because it plays on the stereotypes. That can be funny sometimes, as long as you're not doing it to be mean-spirited. Well, I said this. I mean, I think the... If we know the history of America, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of the indentured servants that came over were Irish okay. and a lot of, you know, and they tended to run off with the African slaves. Mm -hmm. And I think that the first encounters that black people had with white penis was Irish. <laughs> so I'm just saying it's the Irish penis. The, Those are the, tiny the Irish curse, if you will. And Keith, is, Keith is trying very hard not to look at me right now. <laughs> you got on a green shirt. It's just working. It's just working. There's nothing, there's nothing, there's nothing we can do. <laughs> Oh, oh crazy! Nobody knows. It could be huge. I don't know. I'm just <laughs> but you, the green shirt thing. It is hard not to look oh. at you. I, I looked over and had to stop because it was like too much. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is actually. Why do you always have to be lucky charms? <laughs> You know, I'm more offended by that than anything that's been said so far. Lucky Charms. I don't know. I'm just saying. Lucky Charms. I don't know. I don't know. Notre Dame's playing for the national championship. Whoa. I mean, there's, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, I saw that team. There's a lot of Irish guys on that team. <laughs> Named Tyrone and, and Madden Abdullah. And Malik. A lot, of, a lot of those hey. Irish, you see those uh, Irish well, links all the time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, some guy Irish names. I can suppose. <laughs> yeah, oh, which has goodness. everything to do with the indentured servitude that Keith yeah. was referring to earlier. I um, I come from a family of, of Blackfoot Indians and Irishmen. Every Cage. black guy thinks he's descended from Native No, Cage, Cage, Cage. Um, no, it's seriously, the the my gra my great, 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 but the, we don't have any, the, the Blackfoot Indians don't have any, uh, um, what you call it? Reservations. We uh, make pencils. They made pencils for oh. a long time. Um, and so I got my great great, my great great grandmother was still alive when I was a kid. Yeah. She was half Blackfoot, so she still got money from the pencil company. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't. I'm not. I'm so far removed now. My cousin Jennifer, she's half um, Oneida. That's okay, the one. Yeah. And they get money. Um, she's no, she's a she's a third. Her mother is enough to she gets a lot of money. Your cousin Jennifer? Yeah. What's up, her, Jennifer? How you doing? Uh, I don't right? even know if she listens. Oh. All right, keep <laughs> on, keep on, yeah. keep on. <laughs> so anyways, but uh, you know, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> there'll be no black vagina, white penis. <laughs> it's part Indian though. You just said <laughs> black vagina, <laughs> brown vagina, white penis. You said black, it's, black it's foot just, vagina, yeah, black, black foot, foot vagina. <laughs> what? Um, it just all came out in a, in a torrent. But no, um, <laughs> excuse me. I don't have any idea. All right. <laughs> oh, man. But, uh, I have no idea what's happening. But, um, <laughs> terrible. <clears throat> but no, so, but they are not, they're all nighters and they actually get some money and they get, they, like, the nighters got it good, dog. I didn't know, like, you get a whole bunch of bread, you get, they pay for school, Bingo help casino you buy money. a house. Yeah, yeah. They, they, you, they hook you up. 
I mean, I mean, it ain't, it ain't like you get your land back. <laughs> but but Let's you see, get hooked up. Though United Tribe is is one of the Packers' biggest sponsors. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I mean, you look at the you look at the back of the tickets. It's you know, it's Miller and Verizon and and I don't know Oneida. Seven Up and Oneida. Mm-hmm. So yeah, they got Oneida Gate at the. That's where I'm, our yeah. sister at the Oneida Gate. Yeah. And Fleet Farm is one of the gates. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know Fleet Farm had money like that to be helping the Packers up. Yeah, yeah they, but uh, not Farm and Fleet. So, oh. Yeah. oh, I'm thinking, okay, I'm right. thinking. Oh, okay, You're I'm thinking think. Farm and Fleet. No. That was the other brother. There was a pair of brothers, mm-hmm. and they hated each other, and one went off, I'm going to be Fleet Farm, and he was like, oh, fine, I'll be Farm and Fleet. Wow. And Fleet Farm is vastly superior to Farm and Fleet. <laughs> well, that's because Fleet Farm got all the northern rural areas mm-hmm. where, you know, people who like Fleet Farm live. You oh, know, yeah. Farm and Fleet was pretty much – the Milwaukee and its suburbs, and oh. there—I don't think there are, are even are any farming fleets in the city of Milwaukee anymore. I think yeah. they're like one in Monomony Falls, and like that's like maybe one in like. It's pretty gigantic. But so how was yeah. the Packer game? Um, oh yeah, I forgot to yes. ask you about that. It, it, it would. It was awesome it, as yeah. usual. You got you to know? see the, uh, the the championship belt come out, man. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers rushed yeah. for that, and I was watching yes. on TV. I was like, he's gonna get tackled. Oh no! no and then no. like he just had like this extra burst of speed, and I was yeah. like, whoa! Right. <laughs> he's, and he's you could see him like running, and it's like I'm gonna get tackled. <clears throat> no, I'm not real. It was like NFL blitz. Somebody hit the you know, the turbo button and just totally. Did yes. we get some Somebody got an interception. Who got an interception? Yeah, just that was great. I was thinking actually, I was, like, I, I was gonna text you or call you, but then I'm like, I don't want to waste the minutes. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. Sammy's back. Sam Sammy. is back. Yeah. That was hot, man. Yeah. That was good stuff. Good game, good game. Daniel's yeah. running that thing back, rumbling, yes. bumbling, stumbling. <laughs> I saw running plays. I, I didn't even recognize them because I spent so long since I've seen decent mm. running plays out of the Packers. Yeah. But yeah, they. Um, um, like they, they didn't have one running back that really dominated, but it's like everybody had their great carry. Right. Like mm-hmm. they, they had like four different running backs, and everyone had, you know, at least like. Well, I'm gonna go out. On I the, heard. I heard tell one second. I heard yeah. tell that uh, you pissed off one of the the right wingers in front of you <laughs> um, at the game. Now, without telling us what exactly you said, could you tell us what happened? You know, I just. Um, I knew it was gonna be. I knew it was gonna be night, and it was gonna be cold. Mm. I had a bunch of brandy before the game, <laughs> <laughs> and that tells the story, ladies and gentlemen. And no f's were given. <laughs> wow. Was he with his son or with his kids? Or with, I just pictured you like just just a torn expedition. Like, <laughs> well, they, they, were, they were mainly hurled at the offensive line when Rodgers kept getting sacked. Sack. Well, yeah. well. And yeah, um, it was an ugly win, man. It was, but we don't have a defense to speak of, and they played exemplary by the time we got to halftime. It's yeah. the, they got progressively better. I don't know what it is about that first first quarter that they suck. It's like it takes yeah. them at least a quarter before they get any kind of system in mind. You know what I mean? And the teams can rack up points on us. Well, we I always think up part here. of it was uh, what's his name House like, was yeah. was still in at that point, mm-hmm. and I'm I'm just saying I don't think I think Sam Shields is. A better player <laughs> yeah. than Devon House. That's just kind of what it is. Yeah. And uh, mm-hmm. they started giving him more of the rotations, and then mm-hmm. next thing you know, he gets a pick, right. and they start shutting down mm-hmm. their off uh, yeah. their offense a little bit. And let's give a shout out to Tremar Williams keeping Megatron yes. out of the end zone. Good Amazing. Lord. Was, I mean, yes. he got a hundred some odd yards or whatever. It was right. a big game for him, nonetheless. But like, I saw some of those plays. That guy is jumping up and knocking the ball out of that dude's hands mm-hmm. was crazy. Well, you know, Megatron owned him last time, so Tremar was in his feelings a little bit. Yeah, yeah. He's getting back at him. <laughs> but uh, the offensive line, uh, they were failing a lot, but I did see one bright spot, and that was the new guy, Barkley. Yeah, he's, he been, held he's a, been phenomenal. He's been amazing, and he was not afraid of what's-his-face, uh, Sue, yeah, or any of those guys. Sick. He stood up to all of them, and I don't think any of the sacks came off of his blocks. Yeah. And oh, he has, he's, he's hungry. I mean, he got he got brought in in the middle of the season when they got injuries. Yeah. You know, he knows that you know, his— It's our pass blocking that suffers, I mean, and that's why we do so, yeah. so many of them roll out plays because yeah. somewhere along the line there's going to be a breakdown mm-hmm. and by rolling um a rod out the pocket yeah. you give him an extra few seconds you know when the, whenever that breakdown comes well if you can stop him from stepping up or being able to roll out is what teams learn bulaga i always mm-hmm. thought had been the weak link but now i'm starting to wonder if it's not someone else you know because mm-hmm. now bulaga is not in there anymore we can't blame it on him mm-hmm. and it's not barkley because i'm watching that guy play now because i'm like oh god here we go undrafted you know <laughs> 
walk, right. you know, he's well, got that story. Yeah, and he, I'm watching him play, and I'm like, he's holding up his end. He looked yeah. like he looked he looked as good as like a Tauscher or Clifton oh, yeah, type yeah. dude out there. I mean, he was at least that hungry. I'll say that. I mean, yeah. I don't know if he's as talented as the other those guys, but he's hungry and he's playing hard. So now I'm gonna next game. I'm gonna be watching like who you know, is the weak link? There's it's like it's, one, stunt, it's stunt blocks. We're not moving down the line of scrimmage fast. But enough. there's a, there's got to be like one player on that thing that's it's like just, we having a hard they have they having a hard time when you bring a guy here and he comes across yeah. picking up that player. So if you bring a guy from his natural position and stun him around the lineman, yeah. we're having problems picking it up. And um, they have they also having the problems with just the direct pass rush, sure. keeping teams from getting that initial push. They moving us at the line of scrimmage and we just not able to stop them. Yeah. Um, so what they've been doing is rolling a rod out. If you get him to roll out and run the play the opposite direction, you can get some, give him some time and space, some open field space. And when you got teams that don't have a great pass rush, like Detroit don't, yeah, and you able to use those no, tricks. No, they got a pretty good pass rush. Don't they? They got Adama pretty... Kisu at the is is the man. Again, I would like to have. He's a dirty, dirty player. He's a dirty bastard. He but... wouldn't. He wouldn't. He wouldn't work out on our team unless he had like a, a slight personality shift. Like Narrative he would still have to. He would still have to play as hard as he does. But he could not have that kind of nonsense that he's committing out there, man. I don't see that. I don't see the. I don't see the coaching staff of the Green Bay Packers putting up. I think it. if you put him on a team with Clay, he gonna have to. He gonna have to play a different style to play on that line with Clay. Clay just ain't gonna yeah. have that. You understand what I'm saying? Like he gonna start checking him. Cause I was listening to they had a sound effect, yeah, where they mic one of the players, and so they mic'd Clay for a whole game, yeah. and it was really awesome. If you ever go on YouTube, you should look it up. Um, it's just sound effects from the championship game. And you should just just to listen to how Clay talk during the game to people. Yeah. You know what I mean? His attitude is so you know right. football. But I mean, I'm not mad at Sue. Sue feel like I'm the baddest man on the field. And if you put your hands on me, I'm gonna hurt you. Now that's football. That's all. My problem them. is yeah. when the whistle blow, right. the yeah. play stops, and yeah. that's not true um, for him. Yeah, he, you yeah. know, he's playing all. He's playing from the time he get on the field to the time the game's the over. The time with. he kicks Shaw in the ball. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, th- I, 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 I mean, because you can't, you can't, because even even Woodson is a dirty dude. Like Woodson will chop block you. He'll cut at your legs. He'll push you for eighteen yards down the field because that's the way they play football. But when the whistle blows, stop. Right. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing. You expect that out of cornerbacks. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. if, if Sue is such a bad dude, why is he kicking people mm-hmm. like a little? Oh, the stomping mm-hmm. and all yeah. that stuff, man. It's like that is not like. That, 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 that's the most punkish thing you can do on the field. Well, no, dude did drag, maybe him, to, dude did the drag him to the ground, though, after the play. He got up and he was pissed. I don't, no, I don't no, kick. he was shaking his helmet, though. I mean, you grabbing him by what the What, you head, talking about the last game? Or talking the... about the, the, the time he stomped on uh, the Packer. Uh, on Rodgers. Uh, no, no, on the lineman, dude. I forget his name. He stepped Newhouse? Up. Was it Marshall Newhouse? No. no, no, it was Newhouse. It was white dude. I, uh, uh, I can't remember his I name. I don't remember now. I can't remember. But yeah, but anyways, was. he stomped on. Yeah, when he stomped on him. But they were wrestling after the play, and he drug him to the. You said he was grabbing his helmet, and then he. You saying he was grabbing his helmet as white dude drug him no, to the ground? No, 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 no. You are getting the whole thing wrong. It was the black dude's fault. <laughs> <laughs> no, he drug dude. Uh, what, from what I saw, he play, drug him to the he drug yeah, him to the ground, yeah. and, and Dominican got up and stomped no, him. He didn't one get time. up. He didn't get up. He was holding his head, dude. Go back and watch the whole play. He was like shaking him and mm-hmm. you, don't you ever do that to me again, you know? Because right. he was mad about getting dragged down. Yes, right. that happened. Mm-hmm. But after the play was dead, the mm-hmm. drag down happened during the play. Mm-hmm. He was. Grabbing him like this. He wasn't engaged right. anymore. The play was upfield, and Dominic wasn't even in the play. He drug him to the ground. This was like the one two years ago. Right. right? I know what yeah, you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. So that was. And like, that's, that'll piss you off that during was a, the game. Yeah, but that was a whole lot of action, dude, after the whistle. It I, wasn't, agree. It wasn't, I never said the stomp was It was right. the, the drag down happened, then the shaking and the threatening and the wrestling, and then finally, after they got pride apart, he did the stomp. Mm. And that was when they finally threw the flag because yeah. he was—they were going to let him get away with the shaking and the threatening and all that stuff because that, yeah, part, part of it. Game. But the stomp thing was the extracurricular thing that they finally flagged him for, and then they started taking notice of the guy after mm. that. Mm. They realized, enough oh, oh, this guy does that. Right. He really does that. Right. And then everyone's been noticing it. And the thing was, he's only been flagged a couple of times. Mm. And this last game was one of those times he got flagged again because mm. he took two steps and then he clocked in the Rogers, I think it was, mm. right? Mm. Yeah. So I mean. It was obvious that time too. So yeah. he's a dirty player. 
you know. Hey, you got to be but, a little dirty in the league. I'm just saying. Yeah, it, yeah. I think you. I think the 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 vitriage against uh, him is because he's a he played for another team. Yeah, maybe. <clears throat> maybe. If he'd have been a Packer, you'd have been like, man, look what, what he did to him. You know what I mean? But at the same time, he plays hard. He's in the play. He he makes good tackles. Sure. He he has a great push at the line of scrimmage. He does. I agree. He's incredibly we don't huge need and these, strong. We don't yeah, need no, these nobody. Abilities. Yeah, we nobody. Don't need nobody nobody's nobody. denying that. Nobody. No, nobody denies this dude is a, yeah, is a, mean, is a solid player. He's 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 absolutely scary you look at his size him and jj Watt shoulders, are the two man. dudes that yeah. i wish were packers them are the two jj Watt is the truth like for real for yeah real. no jj watt's amazing right. you know like and that's the thing i think a lot of people are like not realizing they like jj watt's pretty much the reason they're doing so good on defense down there <laughs> you know i don't know what it is that holds the lions back from greater success other than coaching I it really is. honestly it believe that. I mean, Watt play for Houston. No, they had no, they no, had, t- they yeah, had no. Mm-hmm. Watt plays for Houston, mm-hmm. and that's the reason Houston's good. Oh, okay. The reason that the, that the Lions are not doing as good as the Houston Texans, I'm saying, is mm-hmm. coaching. I'm saying the Lions, yeah. the Lions have the talent to win the division every year if they wanted they to. They do. They have an incredible roster. You figure, like, the way that Stafford can throw the ball. You figure Megatron's there. It's coaching. They, they it's got coaching. A, a pretty good running back coming through with Mikel DeShore now. It's coaching. And it is. It's, it's, just, a, it's, it's the system. If you got if you got Calvin Johnson, you should win games. Yeah. Period. Right. If you got Megatron, no one can stop him. Yeah. And if you don't design an offense around the fact that no one can stop him as the beginning of the offense, yeah. then you're going to lose. You know what I mean? Right. So and everything could be it's based around that right. that connection mm-hmm. and everything that they do to stop him from succeeding. Do you want me to turn the mic down when you take a big chomp out of your head? <laughs> Sorry. You know, I um actually read somebody's uh, theory online about, um, about like, just NFL teams' culture. Yeah. And – you know, he was arguing that the Lions, you know, like they they're they're on um they're on their third generation family owner, right. and it's these third generation family owners that tend to not really know how what they're doing and just don't really don't really understand things like you know I need to get a coach in here that mm-hmm. develops a system around this talented player that I have, right. mm-hmm. and just you know intangible stuff like that, and you know it's why you know and the Cardinals, I mean they've they've had you Fitzgerald, know, they, yeah they they've had Fitzgerald, and what are they doing with him? They're not doing anything you with know, him. Yeah, yeah. 50, also, was it 58-0? <laughs> yeah. Oh, but they're, but they're, they're they're also, that hurt yeah. me, and I'm not a fan of theirs at all. I was like, oh. I was like, oh. <laughs> Dang. That's got to hurt your spirit. Now, that, you know, that breaks your team. Yeah. And then, you know, they, team. Don't, they don't understand, like, getting a gener- the right general manager. I mean, like, Ted Thompson would not work on every team. He works very well with the Packers, though. Yeah. Mm. Well, I mean, the, the system that he has in place now. They're recruiting been, players, though. I mean, you get it twisted. They get some good players. They oh, just they, the, they put them in a state, interject them into a system that's not going to work. Yeah, and that's what I mean because that that coach is is it's and it starts on the one hand in your general manager and stuff like that. But mm. I, I'm saying like the players that get fed into the system, it's ultimately the coach's responsibility to make that team gel and successful. And I don't think that that coach at the Lions is able to do that. I think he's too mouthy. I think he doesn't really understand like you know the approach that he needs to have in order to keep a guy like Sue from becoming that dirty player mm. and who has that reputation. You as a coach need to be addressing. He was on that. the field trying to fight people too. So right. yeah, that's what I mean. And it's like a rookie yeah. like that, especially you need to give them that. You know, you need to be like, hey, look, there's, you yeah. know, this is where the line is. You know, this mm-hmm. is where you can be aggressive. This is, but you know, after the, and can nobody's you, really made that clear to him. You can't imagine McCarthy like standing for no, that no, stuff no. at all. You know Not what I mean? The first you also time. got what you call Kevin. What's his Kevin? Uh, what's his name? Uh, oh, um, uh, uh, Coach Clay. And uh, Kevin, just oh Kevin Green, Kevin, Kevin Green, Green yeah. coaching Clay, and you got to have a coaching staff that the players can respect. Oh, so I wonder yeah. at at the lineman's the defensive lineman coach. I wonder who he is as a guy. I don't know a lot about the Lions. Yeah, I don't know, know much about the, to... the, that part of the organization because I, I mean, I know all that stuff about the Packers because I sit there and I watch it. Right, <laughs> I go on the website, I read right. interviews, right. I'm like watching video clips. I'm like because I just like the team so darn much. But it's like you know, but uh, watching well, the other guys, I'm like yeah. I, you know, all I all I know whenever yeah, I see the Lions is that head coach is a dingus right. <laughs> but uh but you know you got you got to have somebody that they can respect in the locker room that's schooling them on how to be players and you gotta when you got a rookie who is the best player like one of the great things that happened to clay is clay got to become a great player with charles woodson on the team yeah. so there was always somebody there he could look up to for guidance well and kevin green i mean one of the best you know right. linebackers from when you know clay was oh, growing yeah. up so, yeah i mean know, the thing somebody you can respect they, they and they cultivate that culture 
culture, yeah. you know, like they let it happen. And I don't see that. That's why you don't get rid of Donald Driver. It's why Donald Driver is not in the game, but you keep him in the locker room. Yeah. Because he's good for the locker room. Oh, and all, all that stuff that Cobb is, you know, I mean, that that's Donald Driver. Yeah. That's yeah. what Donald he's Driver new, was doing 12 years ago. <laughs> he, he, I mean, <laughs> and he's like, how many inches shorter right. than Donald? But Donald wasn't huge either. Donald's no, a, a six even, right? Donald, Donald's yeah. my size. Yeah. yeah, I mean, he's not, mm. a, he's not a gigantic leaping guy. He's not a Calvin Johnson size dude. I mean, mm-hmm. Greg Jennings and Jordy Nelson have size on him. Right. And those are not like big receivers, you know, but they're, they're big enough. But like that was the whole thing. It's just the work ethic, you know, and that's kind of cool. Uh, yeah. Cobb just Cobb and Cobb played quarterback, and that helps you to know where to be at, where the quarterback needs you. Yeah, you know what I mean to get get at you the ball. So you know when you go through plays. There was that play where they rolled out, uh, where Rogers was escaping, and they rolled out, and Cobb just like instinctively found the hole in the defense, like instinctively did that stuff. He was like eyeing him up the whole time. It's like there's a chance for this to happen and to work, and it worked out just perfectly. Mm-hmm. And I was just thinking like, he's not been on the team but two years and yeah. he's already he's got been, and he's already got that kind of thing yeah. it's been it's because it's he played yeah. quarterback in yeah. college and he knows where you're gonna be looking when things break down and the one thing that you can't teach receivers mm-hmm. that hey one thing you can't teach receivers is that if the if the pocket breaks down yeah. get open <laughs> like just come get back open. come back right. right come to me I'll, I'll get you the ball come here yeah. so i don't have to set and throw i can just drop the ball up or and throw it across it. traffic you mm-hmm. know which is like what Rodgers is not doing, you know, he's not throwing it across the field that much, mm. and he's able to find those holes that are just straight in front of him. Right. And so even if he's not able to set his feet, he's still able to get it there based on his arm strength alone, and he's not giving the ball a long time in the air for people to come and snag but that's, it. And that's know. the other thing, though, is, is his instinct. You know, you can't, you know, there's, there's so many talented guys out there that just don't have that instinct. Yeah. Right. And you really can't, you know, just, I mean, Randall Cobb has such a great football mind, and that's, you know, I think that's what his biggest strength is. That's why he's able to yeah. you know, I don't, play but the way I don't he does see how that hard the plays breaking down come here <laughs> like that's that's the only thing i'm i'm yelling but at it's, the TV. it's all it's timing go back, right? go <laughs> it's, back. oh yeah i mean i mean you know you, you're watching on tv but mm-hmm. you know there, there's not a whole lot of time you yeah, know they do play off yeah. fast yeah they do play so it's, it's that's why that's where the instinct comes in it's like you're running at full speed to get into your route yeah and, and if and you ain't looking back if you ain't checking back right. you don't know what's going on and especially in offense like the west coast offense it's, it's all based on timing mm-hmm. you know you got to know that if by this time the ball has been thrown you got to be back there mm-hmm. and you know it, it takes a while it takes longer for some guys to develop that and some guys never do and to, that, to you know, know if the so so to know that clock so you saying right to have a clock in your head going one two three turn the ball ain't coming turn back and right. run towards the exactly. quarterback yeah yeah and a lot of dudes just pull up and stop and be running back and forth along the field oh, and they like w- waiting for the ball I've seen, I've seen receivers sit there and watch things happen like, hey it looks like he's gonna get tackled right. darn you know it's like aren't you still participating in this right. particular uh play there sir uh maybe uh yeah, no, you never should mind. run back you towards should do the something and i've you know and I, there's a certain tight end on the team that i've seen do that a couple yeah. times uh. <laughs> Yeah. Michael Finley. Don't well, get me started. I've on seen I've yeah. seen him just watch stuff happen. But he did do uh, on the running play that Aaron Rodgers mm. got touchdown. He played real smart in that mm. one. You just know, back, so he, stepping out of bounds. Yeah, yeah. So he's good, not guilty good. of it all the time. But I've seen him do it on mm. a couple of occasions where he's just kind of like la di da. Looks like this isn't gonna work. I'm oh, not shucks. I'm not getting the ball. Who cares? Like, <laughs> right. Yeah, I think I think he's getting yeah. talked to on a, such a regular basis. It's starting to click. But I, I mean. Past I think so games too. past, yeah. I've seen him do that. Oh, and yeah. I've seen, Michael, yeah. you know, Jermichael had the body type that he's a matchup problem. Yeah. One, he won't catch the ball. And listen, A Rod is the most sacked guy in the NFL, right? Yeah. But let me be honest, and I'm an A Rod fan, and it's probably blasphemous for me to say this, but he got to let the ball go sometimes. He does hold on to it too long. I he, will say that. It's one, two, three. Like you said, it's timing. It's one, two, three. Look, look, look. Throw it away. It's not look, 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 look. Now you back. And, and, and the offensive line, like, we can't hold these marks all day. All right. We already <laughs> weak. Listen, man. But I, got a, I had a chest cold last week. <laughs> Here's the thing. I think... Uh, and, and and you couldn't argue this one on me, mm-hmm. but he did watch Favre do that all the time. The difference is, mm-hmm. whereas A Rod takes the sack, Favre used to throw the pick. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. but that's a guy that used to try to extend plays forever. Right. And then and, and I then think it didn't mm-hmm. always work out. Sometimes it did, and that was the Favre magic, as Madden used well, to say. And that's well, what, but that's what A Rod has. Okay. You know, is a, is an you know as a, a real athlete. I mean, he you know he knows that yeah. he has the ability to make these things happen. You know, a lot of times he and believes then, in himself. But it's and my it does argument. Work. It's yeah. my argument to why he won't. Don't throw the ball out of bounds because one he 
he doesn't want to he okay he played under Brett yeah so when you play under Brett the attitude is I can make any pass yeah if I throw it right right yeah but he doesn't have a he doesn't want to be Brett in so much as he throws more as many interceptions as Brett did right. so that it's that second in his mind where he's deciding oh should I throw it should not throw it and it's taking, you know, oh no, I don't I can't throw this because I throw an interception. I don't want to do that. And just just throw it away, man. Yeah. Don't hold the ball and take the sack. But he's not throw the ball. The thing is, is he's and it's this is where it's not Being decisive. His, this is where it's not his fault anymore, is like in, in my opinion, is that he's not able to become a pocket passer because that pocket does not exist for a long enough period of time. And he's got that in his back of his mind too. Mm-hmm. This is gonna collapse faster than the three second drop. Mm-hmm. This I'm like one, two, three. At two, it's already over. <laughs> More often than not. And there are and I'm like sorry, that. Jeff Saturday, but you get knocked around a little bit. You're mm-hmm. you know, and like I've seen and my favorite guy is sitting on the mm-hmm. line and I've seen him getting burned a little bit, you know. Mm-hmm. Like these things happen, you know. And when uh, Bulaga went down, I was like, they, I used to call him Beluga because right. the dude just uh, not doing it for me right. personally. Mm-hmm. I've been watching the game, and you know, those are the the two positions I ever played in my life, and I did not play very long. <laughs> I, I do not have legs or or wind, yeah. but like I did play in eighth grade, if you could believe it. Wow, wow. Defensive line tackle and uh, offensive line tackle, mm-hmm. and so I watch those positions more on the field than I ever do anything else because mm-hmm. I'm like. Well, this is what fat guys did when they uh, when they make it to the NFL. This is, that's what I would have done if I'd have right. been able to deal with jocks. Used to, yeah. but uh, <laughs> yeah. But I played defensive end, and when I was in school, before the growth spurt thing didn't happen for me, and um, <laughs> and not, not because I have a lot of flat out speed, but because I corner, I can I'm running at my top speed around corners. Yeah. So I close them corners fast, and I can close off the edges. But um, but what I was saying about uh. Saturday. Yeah. It's not it's that Saturday is catching hell because they know that he doesn't he it's taking him a little extra long to catch Aaron's cadence. He's gotten better and better at it. You know, it's it's hiking the ball to Aaron Rodgers who calls it weird, who's trying to, you know, throw them off so you gotta concentrate and he's coming up and people catching him out of position. Yeah. But as he's been getting better and better at it, you know, um one of the things that your boy did, um, Peyton Manning. Oh, Peyton Manning did is he did a lot of stuff under center so he could tap Saturday hip yep. and let him know when to hike the ball. But Aaron's doing it 20 feet back, and that takes a little bit of doing. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And it's difficult for him, especially this late in his career, to catch on to somebody's cadence, right. know his tone of voice, know when he, you know he's supposed to snap it, and so he's concentrating. People catching him out of position. <laughs> we we have singing in the yeah it was happening the, Some in the studio here. But anyway, yeah, no, I, I, Saturday, I don't know. I, I, he's a good player. He's a good player. And I think they're all obviously very capable in that line. But I'm trying to – next week, we're going to figure uh, this thing out. Oh, next week, we better figure this thing out. Yeah. We're going <laughs> to <we're gonna> come <laughs> back. We're going to figure out exactly who is responsible on that O-line for these sacks. And I'm going to be watching. So yes. I'll, I'll I don't, I don't care what we do for the rest of the year. I don't care if we win a championship. We better beat the Bears this week. Oh, yeah. I don't give a damn what happens. Sweeping the Bears would be sweet. See, here's, you see, but I still remember um, when the Packers, you know, swept the Lions in the year, but then they still had to play them, end up having to play them in the playoffs. And it's it's extremely difficult uh, to the point of almost impossibility to beat a team three times in the year, mm-hmm. especially a division rival who knows you inside and out. Yeah. We did it. When? Chicago Bears. No, yeah, we, we lost. won the championship. We won all three games. No, we lost the first one. Why did we lose the first one? Because the the refs were calling penalties and everything. I mean, it was. I don't it remember was, that. It was, yeah, it was. Um, we beat them th- in the NFC Championship game. Yeah, we, we beat them the last game of the season. The third week of that season, we we lost to them because the refs they threw. Oh yeah, that's right, the statue too. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, and, yeah. and I'm not I'm, not, I'm not blaming the, the refs. Too. I'm not blaming the refs because they, they were throwing it was close, though. It was close they were throwing a lot of flags on the Bears too, and that's why I was you know so upset because it's like they weren't even letting them play, mm-hmm. and it's, you know yeah. it's, it's like they'd never worked a rivalry game before. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, I mean, and that throws the offense off and everything, and that does play to the strength of the Bears defense. It does. A lot of the rhythm is stopped and any defense that helps them because then next thing you know they're able to figure out what that offense is thinking so 
Well, gee whiz, fellas, we've talked an awful lot about the Packers. Wow. We've got about 10 minutes left to wrap it up here. We've <laughs> hardly used any sound bites. Do you have any uh, any fun sound bites? Uh, you know, make, I'm, I I didn't to make bother up. getting any because they were, you know. Well, we're going to have to figure this yeah. out. We're going to get you uh, as many political ones as we can. Uh, right. Maybe some Joe McCarthy clips. That that would that would work. You know. Yeah. And, for uh, what we're trying to do. You know, if you uh, if you upload this MP3, you can cut to this. Black vagina, white penis. Black vagina, white penis. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, 13 more minutes outside of uh, Rivera's videos. Hitting it from the side. Hitting it from the side. Hitting it from the side. You will see me kicking the crap out of Mario from the side. Whoa. <laughs> Black <laughs> vagina, white penis. Okay, I'm sorry. He's gonna, this he's one gonna, time. This is, this is gonna be. My, if he's I'm gonna, gonna punch you. Kick. He's gonna. He's gonna knock all your teeth out. Your mouth's gonna look like a black vagina. <laughs> if I this get my butt be... kick, I'm gonna enjoy this. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, la- you, you keep threatening me. The last ten minutes of the show, be me singing that song. <laughs> we can run this. I, I can do verses and everything. I'm quite creative. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so anyways <laughs> yeah. we're, we're still fighting but then when, when we release there goes the neighborhood the album yeah. <laughs> all these sound clips will be available oh my goodness boom, so, boom, boom, boom. stuff is falling, dun, 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 the sky <laughs> is falling. we are falling. apparently not right apparently, apparently yes all wrong Yes. Um. After my lucky charms, that's just hilariously right. funny. <laughs> um. Well, at least at least we had we held the safe zone here. You know? We didn't say too many. Swear we got two swear words. swear words. We we're doing good, man. But, we're but, doing good yeah. for podcast team. We're doing great. Yeah. We're doing great. Yeah. Whatever. Don't talk about the podcast. Oh no, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Black vagina, white penis. In it from the side. Okay. Okay. It's just in my ear. It's not even a real song. <laughs> I love that. Uh, I need that on MP3. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, oh, glory. Oh, boy. So anybody... Oh, see, and, I mean, they, they, got, they got Karate Kid playing right here. I mean, you know, it's... Oh, wow. Karate yeah. Kid? Is this the first one? This is the first one. No. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the first scene when she first broke up with dude. Yeah. So, yeah, so we're, you know, we uh, record at a video store. I guess I can show y'all on the camera hold on a second oh, but yeah it's so if you're the watching second the, one the second one is better because that's um if you're watching a video clip yeah, yeah I mean, that's the right tv there, that we but... can look at and that's the karate kid with ralph macchio does ralph macchio ever hook up with the girl in the second one when he's in okinawa uh-uh. no just, i only saw the first one he just yeah. saves her from getting beaten yeah by the angry angry okinawan with the, with the drum things yeah <laughs> Which I never understood that fight move. Yeah, I don't know. I watched that movie so many times when I was a kid. And I was like, so what is he doing that that guy can't block? <laughs> right. They Those... can't just take his leg out. <laughs> yeah. Just, He's like, standing on one foot. Sweep his damn leg. I'm like rooting for that guy at one point. I was like, you are so much better at karate than this kid. Mm-hmm. Why don't you just kill him? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Why? I mean, I, I liked it the first Karate Kid just because I thought, because it was cool. Cause... Cobra Kai is sweet, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's, when, that's that, when that kid's over there, he's like, yeah, hey, put him in a body bag. <laughs> go go like, back and look at any any prominent piece of pop culture from the 80s. The evil side is always cooler. <laughs> Like the, the the heroes, they were they were all such you know Reaganish caricatures. It was wax off, wax off, dog. That was that was uh, yeah. that was what made. Mr. No, kid. nothing beats Mr. Miyagi though. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, Mr. Yeah. Miyagi is yeah. awesome. Mr. Miyagi is pretty sweet, but you know, uh, I didn't see the remake at all though. The where they had Jackie Chan and Will nope. Smith's kid didn't care. Well, the problem that I had you can't with that, remake the eighties. You can't make Karate Kid in it's China. Like trying to do Breakfast Club because it's Kung Fu in China, man. Yeah. It's not karate. It yeah. didn't make any sense to me. Isn't karate just a generic term? Taiwan, like, is, there, is there actually an art called karate? No. Okay. Yeah. That, that was like all of my. Taekwondo yeah. or Jiu Jitsu or yeah. K- yeah. Korean karate. No. Yes. You, you Korean That's like crazy. Korean is Taekwondo. <laughs> You're Korean crazy. There's, 
something they offered it when i was taking judo you yeah. could take korean karate i don't know what it meant but that's the thing that they offered it was probably a careful legal wording because back then you know there was you know the ninja turtles were big so like people were opening up dojos and like you know they weren't really you know certified taekwondo instructors so they would come no, up with these no, euphemisms no, 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 no. karate is a bastard an americanized bastardization much, yeah. of, of numerous fighting styles all mushed together it's there's no such thing as karate in japan okay. it's taekwondo it's jujitsu it's um even muay thai fighting but what but it's not karate you see somebody doing karate they crazy i'm glad you i'm glad you two asian guys are here to break to oh you're very welcome <laughs> whoa oh did that that was so no, I'm just, no i'm just saying like i i went to one of those they, they call it no call it. no you're not i ain't saying no you're not. anyways ah. That's um, what Mario looks like. Every yeah, <laughs> it's <is> not. <laughs> Making sure everybody knows who said that. Oh, I think of that much. In case you get, whoa, <laughs> dang man, that is my name, dang man, dang man, dang man, dang man, dang man, dang man. Oh, you think of that much? Oh my God, Mario, Mario, that's the line, dude. Oh, I think of that much. Okay, sorry. This is just awful. Wow. <laughs> I guess, but I can sing Black Vagina White Penis all the show. You know, I, I keep, every time I think that this isn't going to happen after the show, you do something like that. <laughs> what, do you have an Asian girlfriend too? What, what do you have? <laughs> oh, yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I'm a black guy. I can get away with it. <laughs> 400 years, I get to say anything yeah, I want. Because you built them railroads. We don't care. We, <laughs> we used to pick a cotton long before y'all dropped air rail spike. <laughs> oh, man. Come on. Cotton wasn't that heavy, okay? <laughs> it was like, you know, fluffy white stuff. Uh, uh, black guys worked the rail sites too. Rail I don't too. see your uh, lineage picking a lot of cotton. Somehow I see you guys, like know. all your ancestors, man. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't see them working Alabama. Alabama, Alabama, Arkansas. My, on my grandfather's side, Alabama, yeah. Arkansas. I don't know. I don't know where all. I've never happens. really, I've never really chased it. We're gonna I get Skip Gates that. in here. We're gonna find yeah, out. That's right. Yeah, that's right. I don't. Yeah, I have no. They had this uh, one program on where they did the, uh, you know, the the lineage show or yeah, whatever. Skip Gates does that stuff. And uh, yeah. they had kept having a. They said it was like a comedy skit. So they had the white oh, guys yeah. and they would go back to these grand things and English, the English uh, lords and whatnot. And then they kept doing the black guys, black like Thomas Jefferson. <laughs> another, another, another white dude get on there. He's like, yeah. So my family lineage takes back to the Scottish Isles, and they had a black guy come on, Thomas Jefferson. <laughs> <laughs> See, I always used to do that, and I got tisk tisk for that. It's like any time I encountered a light skinned person, I'd be like, oh, I see you got a little Thomas Jefferson in here. I was like, I guess that is yeah. kind of racist. It is kind of racist. Not really. It's kind of funny. It's actually racist against Thomas Jefferson. <laughs> People need to let that guy sleep in it, peace. He liked a little black for China. <laughs> He did. Oh. <laughs> and he did. <laughs> Yo, the why, black why? vagina white penis. <laughs> but check it out. He did that in with France. A, with a harpsichord. I mean, you're all listening to this, right? I mean, I'm, I'm in the right for keep saying 5 o'clock outside of Riverwest video by the bike rack. There's going to be five minutes of fury. <laughs> oh, man. I'm just saying, we just, I'm just making commentary, sir. I'm not making any new no. We're getting ready to wrap it up here. Uh, I'm, I'm not really going to beat him up. I mean, Thank goodness. Because yeah. I'm sick. He probably could get this one off. He's a big guy, and I, I have a chest cold, so... I ain't had no defense, but you know, if I, can't, I, can't, butt, I can't beat Mario. The... That would be a hate crime. <laughs> <laughs> Even though he's been saying black vagina, white penis to be all you know for ninety minutes. I was, I was surely play up the hate crime aspect of that. <laughs> <laughs> I would. I wouldn't turn you in, though. You can whoop me. It's all right. I'm going to shoot you, though. <laughs> like, to, let it be known. <laughs> like, you can beat me up. That's fine. I, 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 you got to take a butt whoop sometimes for comedy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Lenny Bruce got his butt whooped a few times for his yeah, joke. It is true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well. Oh. Anyway, let's wrap it up here. You got the jingle all queued up and talk to you guys yeah, next week. It's totally illegal for us to play this song, but it's okay. So, good night, everybody. <laughs>